everyone and once again welcome to eclectica the different news and today as you see with me i have someone very very special well are you one of the women who wants it all motherhood lifestyle business and you have been told numerous times you cannot have it all well here is someone who is dr Sonia, Sonia, and she is one of you too. Well, uh, welcome, Dr. Sonia, uh, to Eclectica, and thank you so much for accepting my invitation uh, to Eclectica. It's an honor to have you here today. Thank you so much. Thank you for the invite. It's a pleasure. I'm looking forward to the chat. Thank you. Yes. And well, uh, well, Dr. Sonia, Sonia, I will just take the privilege to. Uh, introduce you to my viewers well uh, everyone dr sonia sonia is an serial entrepreneur international speaker she has spoken in five continents and she is the only multi award winning business woman in dentistry in australia the later year she was a national finalist of emerging women leader in australia and a beauty queen who owns three international titles current miss world australia and that's fascinating and <laughs> here it doesn't end well she is also a mentor trusted advisor for many young entrepreneurs and business superpower she has a heart to stop domestic violence and runs a non for profit where she provides free dental treatment uh, to women who are surviving violence and abuse well she currently uh, dr sonia she is on the edge of filing two patents in healthcare biotech and have 500000 dollars find funding raised in pre seed stage of her new venture in our free time you can find her participating in beauty pageants and learning how to fly recreational planes well that was overwhelming well me i mean that was fantastic and i know uh, dr sonia that uh, this introduction is too brief and actually uh, i think uh, i should have to keep one session just to introduce you so why <laughs> <laughs> is so big now i will i will get stuck in my door <laughs> <laughs> no no that's really fantastic okay. to have you and well uh, as you know that uh, i i shoot questions to my guests here so my first question is how are you i'm very well thank you i am very well and i think with covid and everything if we are safe and we are healthy i think that's a blessing so i will say i am blessed right and uh, well there is a interesting thing that is running in my mind and even i think um, uh, the viewers all our viewers would also be thinking that uh, like is it mistakenly i am calling you dr sonia sonia well uh, uh, let me just ask that whenever i have seen your name particularly i think we interacted well in linkedin so uh, yes. it's always like sonia sonia so does this have any implication or is does it have a specific purpose so that is what my question is to you so it was an accident but it has a specific purpose that i have kept it that way so when i got my passport in india they missed my surname on the passport i think they didn't think it was important so when i came to australia for the visa they need a surname so in australia or us you cannot even fill a form without a surname so i said well my surname is yadav and they said well you don't have any proof of it because on your oh, passport God. is not there okay. so they put me as sonia sonia said so they put my given name as my surname as well all right and since then it became a conversation starter so means now like you know we're talking about it as well and people don't forget me so and i travel around the world so now i have become a global citizen so i actually quite like sonia sonia so i have kept it and that resonates well with my global citizen kind of status that's that's really interesting and really you know what turns life takes sometimes we really don't know but that's fantastic and uh, as you say that it's very unique it gives a very uniqueness uh, to your uh, particular name and i think adds to your 
one more edge to your identity that identity is. yes yeah and uh, dr sonia uh, one question is that uh, like uh, uh, as far as i uh, have been interacting and as i know you that uh, you you are a dentist uh, if uh, and an entrepreneur as well as a business coach so i'm sure in this entire journey of your life you have had faced many challenges to achieve what you are today so uh, would you like to share with us about the way you uh, faced these challenges or rather I, sh i should say how you overcame those challenges you faced because i think that would be very inspiring for all of us to understand from you so challenges are there they will always be here and i have two aspects one is i usually say that some days i'm out there and conquering the world and some days i can't even do my own grocery list Correct. so not one day is similar to other days second my, my i'm always solution focused so challenge is there because the solution already exists in the first place it's like a puzzle you have to fit few pieces together so challenge is every single day every single day i face the challenge but if you have a solution focused approach where you go like all right this is the challenge i understand but what do i do with it if you get stuck in a challenge it it can it can feel like you're on a roundabout where you don't know where you're going and you've lost the direction but if you have a solution focused approach you actually look at the challenge understand it but then you go like all right move on what do i do with it some challenges are bigger some challenges are quite personal and they upset you as well and they're more like a setback so what i do is i i give myself a time frame i will okay. say all right i will spend 5 hours on it or maybe 2 days on it i'll sulk about it i'll be upset i'll watch movies and binge <laughs> on netflix but then you move on you yeah. have to give yourself a time to absorb the challenge but then you have to move on so be kind to yourself challenges are there and they will always be there if you find someone who doesn't have a challenge in their life well i would like to meet them <laughs> <laughs> true i mean that's that's really uh, fantastically you uh, just in few words you have actually uh, spoken so much of positivity and uh, we are inspired and when well, dr sonia uh, right uh, like for the, for example in this particular situation um yes. Uh, particularly in this pandemic situation as we all know that uh, dentistry as a profession it has yes. every profession has challenges but particularly in this pandemic uh, it has its own challenges dentistry as a profession so uh, i would like to know what would be your views uh, on this aspect in particular so everything in this world has changed with covid there is a new normal that's evolving and we don't even 100% know what that new normal is going to be but one of the big thing which we all have seen is isolation yeah we are we are alone we are separate and even when i go into the clinic and i work i have this hazmat suit and glasses and you know people sometimes don't identify you so <laughs> one of the big thing i am saying in today's profession whether it's dentistry or any other business i think this is the time to actually maintain the relationships this is not the time for the growth as a entrepreneur i see gaps and i see opportunities so my biggest opportunity at this time is because we have time on our hand we have i have staff i have team so ring your patients check on them ask them if they're okay or not not just dentistry health wise if they need anything else this is our time as a dentist to actually step up into a bigger role so look at those gaps and maintaining the relationships or maintaining the businesses the existing patient base i think that's the biggest thing in this covid i think that is amazing and uh, you have rightly pointed out the perfect uh, uh, points in this respect because uh, it, in any profession whatever we are doing and particularly uh, like in, we are healthcare professionals so i think relationship building and sh uh, being compassionate is the first thing that comes uh, in our uh, priority list so i think you have really uh, enlightened us on this aspect 
Well, uh, and it's not to educate people like you know how we, we are dental professionals who right. washes hands more than us, who wears masks more than us. Perfect. Teach dental people how to wear masks and how to wash their hands and how yes. to really actually look after their, themselves. Yes. Educate Absolutely. them, train. Yeah, right, right, right. And yeah. uh, uh, Dr. Sonia, so uh, what when it comes to dentistry as a business, uh, because in, since you are a business coach, so I would prefer to ask you this question that uh, uh, what is that one thing according to you uh, you you think that is lacking when it comes to dentistry as a business particularly uh, a, a country uh, like ours that is in India what would be that one thing uh, you think is lacking in dentistry as a business one of the big thing when I was working in India as well, I had a clinic in um, in Gurgaon. One of the uh, big thing I noticed was um, at that time lack of education. We get so um, we get so much pushed by the business aspect of it that we we actually forget to educate people about how right. the identity actually overall affects us. And lack of regulations in general in the dental professionals where there were so many quacks like who were doing dentistry and because they were cheap, people will go to them. Mm -hmm. So rather than saying, you know, everything is bad, educate people that how a proper qualification is different than just a quack. And mm -hmm. People say, you know, dentistry is expensive. As a dental professional, we know, no, neglect is expensive. Dentistry is not expensive. You neglect your teeth and that's when you actually have to pay to get them filled or root canal and things like that. So right. I think the big thing in India, I believe, is that lack of regulations where um, quacks are sometimes superior than the actual professional. Very true, very true. And I think that's that's very practical and that's a real practical situation over here yeah. and it really affects the uh, people who are actually uh, i mean who are really working hard and they are uh, studying hard working hard giving their years uh, of you know into the education in educating themselves with the degree and all but i think uh, the point that you told is a practical truth it's like a open it's like an open secret i, I can say that yeah yeah, and one thing I noticed when I was there was that what was different different between me and the quack was quacks are actually very good communicator. Yes, right. They communicate very well with the patients. Their relationship building skills with the patients is just so amazing. And we get so caught up in our heads and our profession that we forget that that's the main aspect. <laughs> True. So I think that's how they actually go above us. So I think that's where we need to work a little bit as well. More relationship building and communications with the patients. Absolutely. I, I agree 500% with you. And uh, uh, well, uh, Dr. Sonia, like uh, as, I, as I know that uh, uh, you offer uh, business coaching. So I would yeah. like, I'll be very interested to know that what exactly do you offer in your business coachings and can anyone avail your services or it is like for a specific category of uh, people or niche people so if you can just uh, tell me about uh, that so with the business coaching i do coach some lawyers as well um, uh -huh. i do coach dentists mainly um, dentists as well i do coach some uh, public speakers as well okay. the biggest thing um, i do in uh, business and everywhere in the business is communication your verbal communication and your yes. non-verbal communication because confidence is the key if you get your message across that is mind blowing. That's the biggest, biggest thing. Most of the time people don't buy from us or they don't do business with us. It's just because they don't understand you and they don't develop that trust. So yes, I do coach, especially dental business. I do coach them about the financial aspects of it. But my biggest one, which I help other people as well, is the confidence and com communication, verbal and non-verbal communication. Fantastic. I think that's the most important thing because I also believe that the entire world runs on good communication. Anything, any any area you uh, take up that way. So, uh, so, so Dr. Sonia, uh, like you are an entrepreneur. So as a woman entrepreneur, how do you see yourself 10 years from now? 
10 years from now, I will still be an entrepreneur who will be facing challenges every single day, who will be striving to make this world a better place, better than I found it, and better for our kids and future generation as well. Still facing the challenges and still knocking them down every single day. Fantastic, fantastic. I think you are, you are a, uh, like a, a bunch with with all positivities inside one small bag you have come here today and we are all getting so enlightened thank you so much for this wonderful uh, answer of yours i mean that's fantastic because i think uh, this is one question which i ask we have i have asked many a times or not only in this program but just like that when i try to understand what the other person is doing or they have the vision but i think nobody has answered uh, in such a way, this is fantastic. I mean, uh, overwhelmed once again. So, uh, well, well, Dr. Sonia, uh, being a woman entrepreneur, uh, what is your view? Like, do you think that uh, women entrepreneurship uh, should be encouraged? And if so, why? That is my question. So, women entrepreneurship should be encouraged. Um, honestly, in a real world, People, yes. don't, people don't actually bet on women. If you go and raise like, and that's a reality question, if you have a startup and you want to go and raise money, like Step says that men entrepreneurs actually get more funding compared to the female entrepreneurs. We females are multitaskers. Yes. Absolutely. We we run businesses we run houses we raise kids so we have so many things and i have so many aspects as a woman in my personality mm. i understand emotions much 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 better that's my belief compared to my counterparts i'm not saying that i am above them but there are some aspects which women are better at and i think sensing the emotions that's the biggest thing so if you encourage a women who have this quality where they can tell the story well they can actually sense the emotions of the person in front of you or customers they understand their customers well that's the goal in the business what else do you want if you understand your customers well what else do you want so yes i do believe there are um, in in australia there are 46 percent female founders now this year and we are actually very, very proud that we have reached that number. So it's, it's a huge, there was a huge imbalance, which we're actually now crossing the border and coming on to the other side. So I'm, I'm very excited for what women brings for the future. I think that's fantastic. I mean, uh, really. Uh, and uh, uh, it's really nice to know that uh, the woman entrepreneurship is coming up. And I think in India also, uh, it is much now spoken of and we are seeing uh, uh, le women leaders in different uh, uh, businesses and in uh, different areas. And I think altogether it's a very, very promising uh, promising uh, days that we are going to see more promising people. And uh, uh, I think, uh, well, Dr. Sonia, just coming to the concluding part of our chat, uh, uh, let me just uh, uh, ask you because uh, now with, with after conversing with you, uh, it's so much of uh, positivity. I have been filled up. I got so inspired. Uh, so I think uh, your message to the aspiring dental professionals uh, regarding the future of dentistry would be very helpful. So I I would like to know that uh, that message of yours to our viewers who are aspiring dental professionals and they want to take up, uh, they want to uplift. Uh, dentistry as a whole uh, now and in the future one message and i i was told when i was in india in university as well that you know um i was told that as a female that's the best profession because you work from eight to five and mm -hmm. then you can look after the family mm -hmm. at that time it was kind of in a negative connotation but i want to say to all aspiring dental professionals that you know Limitation is in your head. Yes. There is no limit as a dental professional. Where can you go? You have this degree which says doctor, and that puts you in the top 1% of the world. 
imagine top 1% of the population of the world you're in. So the limitation is only in your head where you can go from here. Back yourself up. No one else is going to back you. No one else is standing by your side. And who cares? If one person actually doesn't listen to you, go to another one. Go to another one. If, if you have to go to 100 people, go to 100 people. Who cares? But as a professional, you have this amazing work and life balance, which you will not find anywhere else. So you're in one of the best professions, healthcare-wise. And the future is so bright for dental. We yes. are... AI is coming, robotics is coming. We can have be like, you know, this super cool kind of profession like <laughs> digitally. <laughs> correct, correct. Absolutely. I think uh, uh, that's, uh, that's really uh, amazing to speak with you. And uh, I will uh, just for my viewers, because uh, let me just tell you, like uh, this program is watched by not only uh, professionals, like dental professionals, but uh, many non-medical people also watch this. So. Maybe uh, we can conclude with your finest message uh, and we can conclude for the day. So what would be your message to all our uh, viewers here or whatever you want to tell us uh, more to inspire us again? Same thing I'll say. Um, people, people wait for happiness. That's one thing I have found and I think my aha moments were people wait for happiness that I will achieve this, I will achieve that. There is no path to happiness. Right. You just have to be happy and things will come to you. The world is your oyster. So keep trying. Vision stays stable. If your vision, so say for my vision as an entrepreneur is build a billion dollar company, my vision will stay the same. Yes, my path will change. My ways will be flexible. My actions will change. So do not give up, but stay happy in the moment as well. It's, it's, it's not that hard. Fantastic. I mean, amazing. And thank you so much for uh, give, giving such a, a you know, boost of energy, boost of positivity. I think that's the need of the hour. And that's always the, have been the need in life. We, as you rightly said, that uh, happiness we cannot buy happiness we cannot gather happiness we just have to be happy that's as simple as that <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and it's like you know yes covid is there there is so much uncertainty but it's the whole planet correct like who are you comparing yourself with mars no every no. single person is affected by it so what can right. you do you can be upset or whinge about it or you just think, oh my, oh my God, this is the quietest time in my life. Enjoy it, right? <laughs> right. Spend time with family. So yeah, I know it's hard, but we're all in this together. Correct. Correct. And thank you so much. And I think we will meet again uh, with some more yeah. uh, with you again with some more interesting things to talk about. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Dr. Bhavi.